In today's video, we'll be looking at some huge bowls that actually exist. Kind of like this camel-like one with a very pretty coat, and this one that looks so fluffy it makes you want to hug it. You probably shouldn't though, it's a bowl for a reason. Texas Longhorn Brought to America by the Spanish conquistadors during the era of Christopher Columbus as a food supply for the colonists, some cattle escaped their predicament and went feral for over two centuries. Talk about dedication to maintaining freedom. This lifestyle gave the descendants the hardy characteristics they'd reputed with today. Think I'm joking though? I'm really not. These bulls have long legs suited for walking long distances. You know, for when they need to search for food, given how difficult it could be to find some out in the wild. In fact, it may have actually been so complicated that the animals themselves adapted to their situation and developed tougher tongues that allowed them to eat their prickly cacti. I bet you other cattle breeds wouldn't do that. Finally though, do you think those horns are just for decoration? No. These guys formed a defense plan if predators came trying to steal their young. When threatened, they herd the calves behind them and circle their horns facing out, ready to gouge anything they feel is apt to get them. It's a pretty cool and intelligent tactic to have. But after the first few attempts, whatever was out hoping to eat their young went home whimpering with a stab wound or two. If they weren't already dead anyway. Today, instead of being used for beef, the Longhorns are considered part of the cultural heritage of Texas and are kept for conservation reasons. American Brahmins Some of you may think that this cow breed is probably blessed, given its namesake in the Hindu caste of the priesthood. I'd argue that's probably true, I mean, just look at their beautiful coats. The gradient transitions are so smooth it kind of reminds me of cats. Born from the crossbreed of Indian bulls to local taurine cows, the American Brahmin has a high tolerance to heat, sunlight, and humidity. Not only that, but the oils they secrete happen to give them natural resistance to parasites. Given these survivalist traits, would it surprise you to learn that they live longer than other cattle breeds? Unlike other cows with a 15 to 20 year lifespan, the Brahmins still give birth to calves at age 15 and older. I bet they don't have the concept of miracle babies, unlike us. Adult bulls generally weigh from 1,600 to 2,200 pounds, while cows vary from 1,000 to 1,400 on average. Sounds like a lot of beef. Sadly though, even though they're mainly reared to be of use of the meat industry, especially in tropical areas, their meat quality is lower than that of specialized European beef breeds. Because of this, they're usually crossbred so that ranchers can raise hybrid cattle with higher quality meat that can also withstand the weather. Hey, at least the cows are good mothers who produce good milk flow even under conditions that are typically adverse for even the best performing European cows. Aberdeen Angus Ever wondered what the Angus looks like? Well, here you go. They're giants. This is because they account for about 17% of the UK beef industry. So, what are the cattle like for these meat powerhouses? This breed is very hardy, able to survive Scottish winters, which are particularly harsh, what with the snow fallen storms after all. In adulthood, the bulls weigh about 850 kilograms, while cows hover around 500. They don't seem that big, but that's still considerable. Still, the calves are usually born at a weight smaller than is market acceptable, so crossbreeding with dairy cattle still increases meat production. They have significant muscle content and are prized for their marbling qualities. For something so delicious, they have about four recessive defects worldwide. One is called curly calf, which doesn't mean they get curly locks around their bodies, but instead means less mobility of their joints. Second is waterhead, which gives them enlarged malformed skulls. The third would be called fawn calf syndrome, which reduces mobility in the hips. And of course, lastly, dwarfism, which reduces the overall size of the calves. Oh yeah, as well as recent happenings show a small minority also showing signs of osteoporosis and multiple legs. Huh, that's kind of horrifying. Chianina Of all the bulls on this list, the Chianina takes the cake for being the tallest and heaviest among its peers. Standing at 71 to 79 inches tall with a weight that sometimes exceeds 1600 kilograms, it's hard not to agree. Raised in the Italian regions of Tuscany, Umbria, and Lazio for the last 2200 years, this breed is one of the oldest known cattle. They were the principal source of agricultural power for a while, being as they were highly adapted to steep terrain until machines came and took their jobs around after the time of the Second World War. In the records, the last time they were used for farm work was in the 70s. Now, since then, they've been used for beef production. As in their previous line of specialty, they've gotten known worldwide, now for their high quality meat. They're actually so sought after that there's even the expectation of breeding stocks of frozen semen and embryos to places such as China, Russia, different Asian countries, and the Americas. Honestly, who knew there was such a thing? 
Are they so great that even trades like that exist? Is that legal? I don't really know, actually. Either way, the Chianina cattle have a growth rate that exceeds 2 kilograms of beef a day. It also helps that they have a high tolerance to heat and sunlight and are good foragers with better resistance to disease and insects than other cattle, making them relatively low maintenance. I don't know, man, if I were a producer, it'd sound pretty practical to me. I'm also a horrible carnivore, so I definitely agree. South Devon You know how some cattle on this list were chosen are bred due to their dual-purpose nature? This one tops most of them because it has three purposes in one single body. The South Devon Bull originated in southwest England around 400 years ago, though it was only considered a well-established breed in 1800. They were mainly used as draft animals to pull plows, helping farmers with agricultural tasks. Sometimes, though, they were squeezed for their rich milk and harvested for their beef. In the 20th century, they were also used to produce butter fat, further supporting South Devon farmers' income as they were regularly purchased for the overseas markets. Knowing this, it might not be surprising to learn that they're the largest British breed with oversized frames and muscular bodies. Adult bulls weigh about 1,200 to 1,500 kilograms and can work starting from a tender two years of age to their 12th. They're also docile, making it easy to manage them out on the field. Finally, due to all the hard work and late in their history, these bulls and cows are pretty hardy and adaptable, making them perfectly capable of living on five continents. If all that doesn't sound amazing to you, research shows these cattle are among the top breeds for marbling. And yes, it sounds like this breed is one of the best ones to have if you own a farm. Pinsgaur Another one of the triple-purpose breed family, the Pins here is one cattle that isn't well known. Why? Because the breed is now considered endangered, with 10% of the population decreasing every year. Yeesh. First, let's take a look at the history. Over in Austria, as far back as 800 BC, the Celts first introduced the ancestors of the Pins in the Hohe Torn mountain range located in today's federal state of Salzburg. Because of all the cattle breeds found in the area, the ancestors evolved to the Pins we know today. One variant, which happens to be the white and black one, is known as the Lucky Cow. This specific type is one that every farmer took pride in having. However, breeder associations preferred the chestnut-colored ones, so the Black Pins cow is rare by today's standards. So what are they like? Aside from their color, their hair is smooth and their skin happens to be flexible. And no, it's not rubbery flexible, but the type that helps prevent insect infestations. They're a medium to large frame build, though people often focus on their beef qualities. Adult bulls weigh above 2,000 pounds on average, while cows are around 1,000 to 1,600. They have sturdy hooves that allow them to travel long distances and russet coats that protect them from UV radiation. With their excellent abilities, it is a little confusing why they're considered endangered. It's from utility crossings with other breeds to increase their milk performance further, though. Doesn't sound too bad, but maybe there will be a new breed with the same abilities as this bad boy, but just at a higher production value in the future. Holstein Frisian When we think of dairy cows, the first thing that comes to mind would be those Dalmatian-like cattle. What we don't know is that they have a fancy-sounding breed named Holstein Frisian. These milk giants originated in Europe developing around 2,000 years ago in the northern provinces of North Holland and Friesland, Netherlands. Their ancestors were the black cows, the Batavians, now Germans, and white cattles of the Frisians, now Dutch. Honestly, who knew crossing these two contrasting colors would give them the spotted iconic look they have today? For many years, the Holsteins were bred and selectively slaughtered so that farmers may obtain and keep those who make the best use of grass, which happens to be the area's most plentiful resource. Due to this effort, the Holstein turned into the efficient, high-producing milk cow it is today. For an idea of their value, over in 1987, the average production of all Holsteins enrolled in the U.S. was 17,408 pounds of milk, 632 pounds of butterfat, and 550 pounds of protein. Just pure protein. A mature cow weighs about 1,500 pounds and stands at 58 feet tall. I think you know why I'm giving you these numbers. It's hinted above, after all. Sadly, the reality is that after six years of service to provide us the milk we grew up to know and love, these cows are shipped off to meat plants to turn into beef. Yeah, a bit sad. For all you know, your next dinner is one of those that fed you six years ago. Which, if you ask me, good way to go out. Parthenays. Once a triple threat like two others on this list, the Parthenays is now raised mainly for purposes of beef production. Originating in the center of France, the Parthenays is said to be one of the oldest French breeds, with records of it existing going back to the beginning of the century. 
Before, they were bred because they provided good quality milk, used to make butter, and were also assistants on the farm as work animals. In 1970, the Breed Society established a breed improvement program, emphasizing the production of high quality beef. They have reddish skin, which sometimes turns dark brown, particularly around the eyes, neck, ears, and jaw. The skin of the face itself, though, is lighter. Mature bulls weigh up to 1,250 kilograms, while their female counterparts can grow up to 900. Purebred cattle are well-framed, double-muscled like the Belgian Blue, and have a high muscle-to-bone ratio. The French government statistics also show that Parthenays are highly productive, fertile producers of high-quality lean meat. Something we all learned today, too, is that these triple-talented animals tend to be very adapted to their surroundings. It's no different for the path. They can also thrive on all types of terrain and cope with different climates. Further, they also have good disease resistance and, despite their size, have excellent mobility. That part with the fact that they have easier calving and offer superb quality beef with less cholesterol than chicken makes them a farm must-have, along with a few others. Charolais Here's another one that came from France. Legend says that white cattle, presumably this breed, was first noticed in the region of Charoles and Navarre as early as 878 AD. They were popularized later in the 16th and 17th centuries, particularly in the markets at Lyon and Villafranche. The French have long been known to select their livestock based on their size and muscle. After all, they needed help plowing their fields, aside from the cattle being food reserves. You may notice that this breed isn't necessarily the cutest of the bunch, but that wasn't the priority back then. People paid little attention to how refined their cows were and prioritized breeding a herd that had massive utility instead. After the Second World War, this breed became known in other parts of the world. At first, they were shipped in small exports, and by small, I mean like four to six cattle per order. Slowly, over time, this small stream turned into a booming business. In 1964, 256 bulls and 1,605 cows were exported from France to orders overseas. What's even more interesting is that this trend still increases today. Who knows, maybe it will be as famous as the Angus. As for their characteristics, this one sports medium to large frames, with short, broad heads and heavy muscles. They can fit into any system and have easy times calving. Also, their history of being helpers makes them easy to manage, and they don't have many temperament issues as well. Because of this, this breed's bulks can be found in any cow-producing country to date. Now it's time for the day's best pick. How big do you think bulls can get? Because I don't think you guys are prepared for this one. The Belgian Blue Do you guys know that Hulk has a bull counterpart? If not, feast your eyes on the Belgian Blue. This guy's weight ranges from 1100 to 1250 kilograms and has a height of about 57 to 59 inches. Originating in Belgium, obviously, in the 19th century from crossing local breeds with imported shorthorn bulls of the UK, the Belgian Blue was first used as a dairy and beef breed. In the 1920s and the 1960s, a movement happened wherein people started favoring livestock that could be used for dual purposes that also have heavier muscles. So, yeah, they weren't given an extensive workout or fed some steroid-laced hay like some people may have thought. Instead, research shows that crossbreeding event that happened decades ago caused these animals to possess a gene that suppresses myostatin production. Myostatin, in turn, is a protein that normally inhibits muscle growth after a certain point. Really, it's no wonder they're super lean. This whole thing sounds good for us humans since we'd have more steaks or barbecues to feast on, but their condition is detrimental to the livestock. Because of their sheer size, the bulls experience joint pains and cardio and respiratory problems. Also, let's not forget that giving birth naturally would be incredibly difficult, as the cows have narrow birthing canals, prompting vets to deliver the calves through C-sections. Ugh. The Galloway Bull You seen Oreos walk? Yeah, me neither. But I think this is the closest we can get to witness an event like that. Just look at how cute and fluffy they are! Probably delicious as well. This ancient breed of bulls for centuries had no name. At the time, they were only referred to as the Black Cattle of Galloway. Honestly, no wonder it's named the way it is. So anyway, like previously mentioned, the Galloway Bull is ancient, having been first fully developed in the 17th century. Initially, the herd book only registered them as black cattle, but recessive genes of red slowly persisted in the population. Later, Dun Galloways were also allowed into the register, likely from crossbreeding or mutation. In the 1950s, this breed was popular among cattle producers because it was low maintenance and yet had high quality meat. However, the mad cow disease crisis caused an export ban on them, despite having no cases found on the breed itself. So, due to widespread fear of cows in general, the breed numbers declined. Thankfully, though, they've recently gone back in demand due to their friendly economic value. 
That being said, the current breed count is believed to be lower than 10,000 cattle worldwide, with most residing in Northern Europe. I suppose that may add a premium to their meat, though, because despite being rare, there are claims that Galloway beef is juicy, tender, and flavorful compared to other breeds. Some programs even mark it at the top of the chart for the three characteristics I just mentioned. Before we move on, I've got a little challenge for you that'll take five seconds to complete. So here's the deal. He does leave a like on this video, smash that subscribe button and hit the notification bell, and you will get 25 years of amazing luck. Try it, it really works. Cemental Bull We've heard of a number of these entries previously being dual or even triple purpose in nature, only to be bred for one specific reason later. That's not the case for this breed, though. To this day, they're raised to be genuinely dual use, producers of milk and meat. The Cemental's history can be traced as far back as the Middle Ages, where records indicate that it was born from a cross between large German cattle and a smaller indigenous breeds of Switzerland. Since its origin, the species has spread to all six continents, with 40 to 60 million cattle worldwide. Cementals have varied colors, with some colors as unique as gold. This pigment, then, may be equally distributed through its body or appear in patches. The majority of it, though, may be found around the eyes. It helps reduce their eye problems, which occur from bright sunlight. They have large frames with good muscling, weighing about 700 to 900 kilograms for cows and 1,300 kilograms for bulls. After generations of selective breeding, people have created balanced cattle with a docile personality with good maternal traits to maximize milk and beef production at minimum cost. This breed adapts easily to varied conditions, ranging from small ranch owners to extensive operations. They're bred globally thanks to their high beef yields and success in crossbreeding, with their offspring having a better beef and milk yield like them. See you all next time!